pizza maker. The second was a hooker. <laughs> Downstairs and opened a bag of Cool Ranch Doritos and watched television. <laughs> you know that there was a time before Cool Ranch, right? <laughs> cool Ranch Doritos are only as old as my sex life. <laughs> 1986. It was a good year for me and for seasoned tortilla chips. The first time he tried putting his tongue down there, 
We were naked in the back seat of his parents' car, and the next thing I knew, he was pushing me out of the car into the snow. <laughs> and I looked up, and his face was covered with blood. And I was horrified, because I'm 14, and I thought I got my period. It turned out he had gotten a bloody nose from my <laughs> poor, neurotic Jewish boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. I was like the only non-Jewish person in the town that I grew up in. I went to so many bar and bat mitzvahs when I was 13, I can still sing that <coughs> Torah. Baruch Adonai Hamburach, Baruch Adonai Hamburach Leolam Bayed, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Barchabanu Mikol Hamin, Benatan Lanu Et Rato, Baruch Ata Adonai, Notein HaTorah. <laughs> When you're a teenager, you never get to have sex in a bed. <laughs> no, it's not an eyeliner, Mom. I'm 14 now, so please don't condescend. Those aren't my cigarettes, oh, Dad. I was holding them for a friend. When he dropped me off at my dorm, I went straight to the payphone and called my mom and said, I just had the best sex of my life. <laughs> Peter Pan, the musical. I got paid $2,000 a week to sing and dance with a, with a traveling slumber party. There was a Turkish pirate Indian with a weightless switch kick. He called me new girl. He was 22, I was 27. He was everyone's younger brother, bookish and sharp-witted. He taught me to play pool, I taught him to drink tangerine and tonics and smoke camel lights. The cast thought it was really cute that we were buddies and they were like, oh thank god we have this girl in our show now who's so stable and married and we don't have to worry about her dramas. 
<laughs> when we landed in New Orleans five weeks into the tour, I felt like a housewife in 1960 who had left her husband for the blouse man and stopped ratting her hair. I had curls everywhere. New Orleans was so humid that the fog from our fog machine turned to gel instantly on the stage. Our dressers were so, so stoned they were gone before the show was even over. And it all seemed to match my indiscretion. But Will was a good person. He told me at the Café du Monde over beignets that I would never take a bite of, <laughs> that he couldn't be responsible for breaking up a family. When I told him that we couldn't stop, that when love turns up unexpected, you never turn it away because it's like finding a needle in a haystack and so many people are never lucky enough to have their finger pinched. I know. <laughs> He told me that he was nauseated by his own reflection in the mirror. I cried through our final show in New Orleans, our final show before going back to New York City. I remember one of the pirates putting a machete to my head and saying, there is no crying in Peter Pan! <laughs> I would cry through enough shows on Broadway that I got written up by the production stage manager. <laughs> <laughs> Tom and I moved in together when we were 20. Our divorce came through when I was 30. Wait, was this what you meant when you said numbers, or did you just mean that I was supposed to be like, it was this guy and it was this guy? <laughs> I spent a lot of my money on $22 trap candles and a lot of time in the bathroom listening to the same mix CD of Roberta Flack. Elvis Costello and Jewel. <laughs> he took your coat off. He stood in the rain. There's a Maya Angelou poem where she says, Had I known the heart would leak, slobbering its sap with a, vis with a vulgar visibility into the dressed up dining rooms of strangers.
semi-regular dinners to just check in and make sure we were ready to file for divorce. I had never confessed to Tom that I had had sex with Will. I had told him that I had strong feelings for someone else, but that was it. It seemed important that I come clean. We went out for a steak dinner and we got really drunk and I came back from the bathroom and led with, I had sex with Will. Without blinking, he looked me in the eyes and said, I had sex with your best friend. And that girl that I went away with three months after we met? in perilously high wedges, sacrificing any lingering reputation I had for professionalism in order to get this man to pull down my panties. <laughs> when he finally did, I had bronchitis, and we had to stop in the middle of several heated moments so I could hack up a lung on all fours. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe introduced me to her ex-husband. Oh, yeah. 
devilish grin. I gave a knowing smile. And I saw the same owl. Another bite. And he said, my son is an actor. No. Oh, sure. She was 20 and made me lock the cats out. Lager, have you tried the port? <laughs> My round. Tapas? Beer, please. Oh, okay. Good night, Zoe. Good night. My toenails green. Oh, we're out of red. Try some white. Oh, bye, Joe. Bye. Rich tea biscuits. Sleepy. I think he's leaving. Good. I want to go to sleep. Wait, what? I think I'm about to be kissed. Being kissed, being kissed, tiptoeing. Stop! I have five reasons we should not do this. One, we're drunk. Two, you're my friend's ex-husband. Three, um, I live in another country. Four, I have a friend waiting for me inside. Five, you're my friend's ex-husband. Six, I'll be on a, in, on a plane in 12 hours. Seven, it's just plain silly. Eight, that's seven. Persuasion, laughter, limbs, laughter, upside down, pee, shower, couch, tea, cigarettes, laughter, laughter. I am the cuddliest thing that ever was. I found his tickliest bit. <laughs> There were faceless, whispered conversations in the middle of the night quiet room. We talked about our father's names. Good morning. I have to go to work. Good morning. I have to go to America. <laughs> <laughs> Squash game. I'm gonna beat the bollocks off of you, but I won't be into work for a li If you've got a naked American in your bed, don't bother coming in at all. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> what do I take home? Catch for a gap and only from the hamper. A disposable camera and the want of nothing. What does he want? He wants me to come. Thanksgiving Day, Brooklyn. A hurried dinner, a suitcase, a black car. Someone's famous uncle says to me, so you're just popping over for a quickie? <laughs> Kennedy Terminal 2, Kuwait Air. With magnified patriotism because of September 11th, I am wearing baby blue cowgirl boots with pink and white flowers. I stand amongst the saris and turbans and large pleather suitcases strapped together with tape and labeled Bombay in a pink cowgirl hat toting a six pound apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> They'll kindly slow down over London, dropping me out the Bombay doors before moving south, before moving east to Kuwait and on to India. Thank you. 
Tom at AOL.com. It was like a pinch. Yes, Arthur, I'm still here. vagina beard of scabs. I insisted on keeping a pair of boy shorts on and I sat on top so that I could negotiate the paint. <laughs> it gives a whole new meaning to who wears short shorts. <laughs> you don't know that commercial. <laughs> the day I arrived, he broke up with me. And a week later, I broke my foot. regret going swimming, no matter how cold it seems, naked at night in the ocean off of a rocky island. I'm actually not so much about the swimming 
but the nakedness. I want to be a mermaid, a sea nymph in the phosphorescence. One to lie on my back, all nose, nipples, cooch, and toes, and be called a spirit. The water is always cold in this part of the Atlantic. These New England kids will say that it's not so bad, that I should just jump in, that it's more painful to feel the water first with my feet. But some nights, all I can bear is to lie face down on a rock and let the waves wash over. I have 
lost depth perception, which is how I broke my foot. He took me back to his suite of hotel room, rooms, where he slapped me with his penis. He's the only man I've had to tell to stop because it was too big. Why do you all think that's a good thing? A penis you can't have sex with is not a good penis. In the morning, I woke up early to try to collect my belongings and make a graceful exit, but I couldn't find my purse. I walked around for like a half an hour, and I looked over to the bed and saw that he had been watching me the entire time. I was just giggling. He took me to look through the suites of rooms in case we had left it on one of our earlier adventures. And we, we opened the door, and the stunt man was jumping up and down on a bed wearing a cowboy hat and the largest erection I have ever seen, while a young blonde sat demurely at his feet. They hadn't seen my purse. <laughs> I had spent a little too much at the sex section of Barnes & Noble before I went, trying to perfect my blowjob, and there was a young man on the island who was the unfortunate recipient of an idea I had about saliva. <laughs> When we had post blowjob intercourse, by the time we were done, we were covered in froth. <laughs> 14. I was trying to produce a television show that I had written, and the BBC had been interested, but then they let it go. So I was seeking venture capital money, and I had gotten a meeting with a Dutch VC, and I wore my magic dress, and I met him at Markt, where he ordered me a tangere and tonic and the fruit de mer. I have a theory that I am just allergic enough to fish that it makes me amorous. <laughs> I get like good hives. So the next thing I know we're at Spice Market and then we're at Coyote Ugly and then his penis is in my mouth and we're in a white stretch limo on the way up the West Side Highway to my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> He's rich and European. He takes me out for cappuccinos and pastries at a cafe in the morning, and the next time we have dinner, there's champagne. But I don't like him. <laughs> and I was sent by my producer to get his money. So now I am a prostitute. <laughs> Finally! <laughs> Being a prostitute means that you keep having sex with someone when you can't stand the sounds that they're making. And it means that you play lifts to somebody you purr even after they've just talked to you like it's pre-suffrage. <laughs> after a while, I couldn't, I couldn't take the whimpering and I couldn't take the condescension anymore. I fucked him as hard as I could and I asked him for money. <laughs> <laughs> I like to go to Paris for a weekend in the spring to be taken by a lover on an all expensive train. I'd love to dine at Lip in the towering freedom air. Lunch at Lay, go, my go. Cafe all day on the plane. Take it by a lover 
banker. He'd fallen off the back of a bus and he had a metal plate in his head. He'd lost his sense of smell. He'd come into my room in the mornings and hold his armpit up to my face and say, does this shirt smell all right? <laughs> I was pretending to live in London, but I was orbiting. But I had been taught to roll a joint when I was like a little more than a toddler by my parents' friends. I had good weed. I knew how to roll a good joint. I was 34 and wearing tiny sundresses with large boots and visible underwear. Nicholas and I had sex on the rocks under a full moon. We fell asleep entwined and woke up assaulted by mosquitoes. I liked him. He was an engineer. He was a student of engineering. <laughs> I'd visit him in college and sleep in his lofted bed and watch HBO with his roommates. <laughs> I'd been given both a Louis Vuitton overnight bag and an X5 by my brother. I often took care of my brother's 90 pound pit bull. Overnight bag, BMW, pit bull. That year, I got so many marriage proposals while pumping gas. <laughs> While we were still on the island, there were some dramas. He had a girlfriend. I was being an asshole to a really cool 17-year-old girl. I knew that I was always supporting the wrong team. I should be mentoring these women. I should be mentoring them. I should be supporting them. <laughs> OK Cupid was free. Sperm banks are also now online. I can shop for my future, no matter what direction it takes, without leaving home. <laughs> Boy lovers in the strangest places Sorting through smiling faces Looking to trade information Looking to find consummation
I took the pit bull to the small island once, and he was all about people. He was only about, pe about his people. And I watched him run around and explore things, but then start to wonder where I was. And I would come around a corner, and the dog's face would light up like nothing I have ever seen. And I thought, I want a man to look at me like that. <laughs> I care about you, sweet, crazy Hallie, but not the way you want me to. And not so much that I won't flinch if you get a little closer. That's when I got a message on OkCupid asking me about the Paris Marathon and the Bauhaus. He was married. Wife and kids are awesome, his profile said. But he wanted a girlfriend. Not just for sex, like a real girlfriend. I thought at least I would know from the beginning that it wouldn't end well. I thought it was the cure for my chronic optimism. You talk about the wall you built to keep you safe Ten bricks from your first fall, ten more from your first strafe My work is important and so is my dignity when love is discordant and risk is so risky, I'll veil it high. You will never get close. I'll never sigh, never lack remorse, lack remorse. Oh, it means tearful. Prone to tearfulness. <laughs>
I do meet a nice man. This is probably too much information. <laughs> Sleep. 